Hallelujah and praise God. I'm Pastor Jay and this is a devotional time. Well, I hope that each and every one of you had a, a wonderful and awesome time out at your respected churches this weekend. Well, at LFBC, we had a, a, a just an awesome, awesome moving of the Holy Spirit. Um, it was just such a special time. Uh, yesterday morning, we were able to talk about biblical tithing. And this is something I spoke with the devotional crowd on Friday about. It just really moved the crowd. Had a, a multitude come down to the altar and uh, really just uh, a, a moving um, uh, service where people, I believe, were understanding that, that uh, God wants to bless us. And in Malachi, he tells us that if we'll bring it into his storehouse, that uh, he will bless us so much that we cannot even contain it when we give unto him through our obedience. He will bless us that we can't even contain it. And then last night, we were able to talk about some of the characters of Christ, some of the characteristics of Christ. We had spoken a couple months ago about the characteristics of God and this uh, talking about same-sex marriage and the redefinition of marriage and uh, what God's intention of the definition was. Uh, in Genesis, we see the creation of the earth, and through the creation, we see procreation, and that is the, the, uh, the original character of what God had in mind. Well, we're looking at the character of Christ last night, and I want to just talk to you just for a few moments about how Christ provides for us, but sometimes, for some reason, we just don't see it and we don't understand. We can, we can be on top of the mountain. We can be sitting underneath his blessing. And for some reason, we still have problems realizing that Christ will provide all our needs. Before we do, let us pray. The great Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord Jesus, just for for providing for us, Father. Thank you for the wonderful time out at LFBC this weekend, Lord God, just uh, to all the ones that are on the online congregation here this morning, Father. Just bless them and touch them. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, in the book of Mark, Mark 8, we see that uh, that uh, at, at the end of 7, Jesus had went into the uh, the region of, of, of Thyra and Sidon, and uh, he was healing people. The disciples were with him. A multitude had started to follow him, and, and he was healing people. He had took a demon uh, out of a, a young girl, and he had uh, he had uh, healed uh, a um, a man of, of deafness, and so he was uh, he was really doing a lot of healing, and, and they were seeing that, and and the blessings were just rolling off, and they were seeing the the magnitude and the awesomeness of their Lord and Savior, uh, you know, and and so in eight we see that that um, as he is um, was. Uh, Still in that region, said he, they were they were walking out, and he had looked back and saw that he had uh, gained a great multitude, and this is the four thousand, as most of you know, and he had gained a great multitude of people behind him, and they were following him. They was out in the middle of nowhere. Some of them had left their homes days ago, hadn't eaten in days, just to follow and listen and watch him heal people and to hear him teach. And oh, what a what a what an awesome and glorious. A time it must have been, but see, Jesus uh, had sympathy on him. He said, these, these people haven't eaten in three days. Uh, they need they need food, and and the disciples, in their love, and I'm sure in in, in their uh, their awesome ignorance, uh, as so many times we are, they looked over and said, where are we to get bread? Where are we to get nourishment? Where are we to get fulfillment in the middle of the desert? And Jesus, obviously, this is where he says, give me the bread and the boys' lunch, and he multiplied it and fed the masses. You know, so many times that, that we ourselves, we can be on the mountaintop, we can be, we can be seeing uh, Jesus move in our lives, and something will come up, and we will, we will bang our head against the wall trying to figure out how to fix something, how to do something. It tells us here, it says, in, in verse 4, it says, his disciples answered him and said, where can anyone get enough bread here in this desolate place to fill all of these people? It says, how many loaves do you have, Jesus says. Jesus says, take what you got. You don't need to have everything. Take what you got, and he will use it to glorify his kingdom. Hallelujah and praise God. You see, so many times, as I said, we feel like we can be on the mountaintop where we look over and we try to do something on our own. But we've seen all the, 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 the awesomeness of Christ in our lives. But yet we still doubt him when we're in that desert place that he will fulfill all of our needs. Dear ones, uh, let, me, let me tell you clearly here this morning, as you go off to work or to play or on vacation this, this, uh, this week, that Jesus fulfills all 
of your needs. No matter where you're at in life, no matter what you're going through, the one who saved you is the one who is still providing for your needs. You needed a savior and he was there to provide for it. When you need substance, when you need to feed, when you need to eat, understand that Jesus, hallelujah, is there to fulfill all of your needs. Well, hallelujah and praise God. Well, there again, my name is Reverend Jay Warwick, and I'm the pastor at Leonard's Fork Baptist Church. If you do not have a home church, why don't you come out to Leonard's Fork? I know that you'll be happy to see what Jesus Christ is doing there. Have a great day, and God bless you today.